bless the name of Jesus, I want to welcome our television audience right now. We just want you to know that we're believing God and praying for your miracle. I know God is a God of miracles, signs, and wonders, and he wants to bless you, prosper you, heal you, and most of all, if you don't know him, he wants to save you. We want you to be here enjoying the presence of God with these wonderful people who love the Lord with all their hearts. Uh, remember, looking forward to seeing you right here. And until I do, remember you're blessed, highly favored, and greatly loved. Agape Worship Center, give our television audience a mighty hand clap all over this place. Come on. A strategic plan to tear down every stronghold. Every stronghold. I believe this church is at a place where you need to really understand what this is all about. Okay? We need to understand who we're fighting in the spirit realm. All right? 2 Corinthians, we're going to just use this for a text. Chapter 10, verse 3 through 6. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 6. Amen. Hallelujah. Ready? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know these verses. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought, every thought, every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge or come against all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Well, I could preach that one right there, but let's, let's talk about what we came to talk about, okay? I want to accomplish today and next week, hopefully, okay, really what the blood has established already, the blood of Christ. All right? I want to enforce what the blood has accomplished already. Our fight, you have to understand, church, and if we get this, I'm telling you, you're going to see things take place in the spirit realm and in the physical realm, in your families and all over and everybody around you. Okay? Is not against every religion that you don't believe in, every religion that maybe some of us came out of. Okay? Yeah, I don't agree to what they're doing. No way, all right? But that's not necessarily who we're fighting, all right? Uh, you're not fighting against every church that doesn't believe in tongues. Hello. You know, you know th that's not where the argument is. You know, I, I, I hear things. You know, I don't go on, uh, on this Facebook stuff, okay? I, I, don't, I don't have that kind of time. All right? But I hear stuff. And what we're arguing about is, is ridiculous, Okay, in some cases, in some cases, all right? But it's what our fight is, it's against every demonic devil behind every drug dealer, okay? Every alcohol, alcoholic, okay? It's what's behind every abuser. It's what's behind that is where our fight should be and really what we should be focusing on, all right? We need to understand the only way to fight the devil, which is, by the way, okay, a spirit, is through the spirit. And we have to learn what's behind all of these evil things or all this evilness. So church, listen, I've come to tell you, all right, there is no room for the lukewarm Christian any longer. The lukewarm church won't cut it, all right? It just won't happen. The, the compromising church doesn't have any kind of power to come against all this evilness, all right? It doesn't have power to come against a spirit world full of devils. Now, I know a lot of you don't want to hear about the enemy. I know a lot of you don't want to hear about the devil. And that's not what the message is going to be about. But you've got to understand who you are fighting the power of the demonic must be met with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't care how many, how bad and big you think you are. I don't care what size your biceps are. Okay? You can't beat the devil up in the physical sense. 
If that were the case, whoo, I'm telling you right now, we'd be, we'd be, we'd be fighting. All right? You know, I, I'd call up Brother Mike. You know, I'd get Brother Ronnie. You know, I'd get James to throw that dude around a little bit, you know. But it doesn't work that way, church. Our fight is not against every force of religion. It's not against them, all right? But it's what's behind every evil, evil act and what's underlining every demonic force to allow this evilness, okay? And we must understand what the Bible describes as principalities, darkness, all right? And, and forces of evil and strongholds. Now, what is a stronghold? Well, listen to what the Greek um, interpretation here is, or let me say it this way, what it says in the, in the Greek or the meaning in the Greek. A stronghold is, the, the meaning of it is a castle. Now, I had trouble with that, okay? Or a fortress. And I'm saying to myself, you know, back then when you think about castles, Okay, not a modern day castle, but old castles, you know. They were somewhat, you know, uh, kept you captive. Very difficult to get into, very difficult to get out of, because most castles had drawbridges, you know. And what, but what he's trying to say here, that's just my own interpretation there, by the way. What he's saying here is, it's a place that you take up residence. And when you take up residence there, all right, it keeps you or holds you strong. It becomes a strong hold on you. All right now, listen to me. Today, even, even science is recognizing that there is something beyond the grave. You know, even the, the, the scientists are, are declaring these things today. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 16, 18. He said it like this. He said, Peter... Upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. And what did he say? The gates of what? Hell shall not prevail against it. He knew. He had a fight on his hands, okay? Peter. Demonic strongholds. You know what else they are? Okay? Let me bring it home a little bit. It's pride. It's rebellion. It's witchcraft, okay? It's that foul mouth, all right? Strongholds. Strongholds that keep you from moving to the next level of God, need to be cast out. We try to let psychology counsel out when sometimes it needs to be cast out. Hello. It's time for the church to stand up and fight. But you got to know who you're fighting against. You're fighting against an evil force, and he's called Satan. All right? Now, where does the battle begin? Well, reading these scriptures, okay, I believe it starts right here in the mind. Everything starts there, church. When God created man, he created him in a trinity. Let me break this down for you, okay? Body, soul, and spirit, all right? And with that creation, he gave you and I a mind to think, a heart to love, and a will to choose. Now watch this, okay? And that makes every one of us different from your German shepherd. Or your poodle, okay? Because we have a free will. We have a mind to think, all right? We're created in a trinity. And we're the only uh, a creation that he has created that is created in that form. Third John, verse 2, all right? says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, okay? And even as your soul. Prosper. Nope. Third John. There we go. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So now watch this. Okay. Soul. The word soul there in the Greek says this means soke. Soke. Okay. Which is a reference to the study of psychology. Now, now follow me, church. All right. And psychology is the study of the mind. You students know this, all right? All right? The study of the mind and how you think. Now, you're with me, all right? Now, watch this, okay? Now, 
So the end of the verse, okay, can say this. Because your thinking and mind is right, all right, I can prosper you. When you think right, okay, when you think positive, when you think according to the scriptures, all right, not calling gloom and doom on yourself, all right, not naming and claiming and giving that thing identity, all right, that's bugging you, all right, but when you speak and think the way God wants you to think, you know, that's when the prosperity comes. Not prosperity necessarily just in money. I'm talking about your, your healing. I'm talking about your health. I'm talking about the salvation of your loved ones. I'm talking every, every kind of prosperity, church, okay? So he says this, I want you to prosper and be in good health because, watch this now, the eye gate of your life, the eye gate, what you see goes in here, of your life is receiving truth and righteousness. Woo! And it comes, what comes, what you see goes in here, and what goes in here creates the life you're going to live. I want you to prosper because what I'm talking about, okay, is supposed to take you to another level. We, we want to mature and we want to receive. Listen, you can't sit on the phone, all right, or, or on Facebook, okay, and gossip all day long and expect to prosper in God. Now, let me do it this way. Let me call it what it really is. You can't sit on the phone, okay, and take in garbage and expect garbage not to come out of you because what you take in is what's going to come out. Hello. Amen. Now that we understand this introduction, by the way, of the message, let's see how we can deal with strongholds. Because we all face them, church. And strongholds, let me say this, doesn't, because you're battling a stronghold, doesn't make you a bad Christian, a bad person. No, no, strongholds come all of our ways, church. But what it is, see, this is why he called it a castle. You don't take residence there, you don't live there, you don't stay there. You're learning today how to fight them Okay, and get them out of your life. All right now. So, stronghold. First of all, okay, it's like I said, it's a fortress. This is what, it, it's not, first of all, let me say it this way. It's not a devil. You don't have a devil. The devil is behind it. All right? The devil is behind it. Okay? What it is, it's a fortress or a house, watch this now, get this, if you don't get nothing else, you gotta get this, okay? It's a house or a fortress of wrong thinking. That's what it is, church. That's what it is, of wrong thinking. The Strong's Concordance calls it a castle. That's an amazing word for it, okay? And even if you're sincere, okay, or you're a, you know, so-called Christian, all right, and you believe a lie, that a lie invites the demon to live in that stronghold. You got to be careful of those things. Don't live there. If your thinking, your action, your believing, okay, are not what they ought to be, okay, it will invite that demonic thing in your mind. Again, I'm not saying you have a devil. I'm saying there's a devil behind it that will invite that lie in your mind and tell you to do things, tell you you have this, tell you you're going to get that, okay, and everything else. But when you, okay, walk in the, in the thinking that God thinks of you and what God has promised you and you speak that and that goes through your eye gate, into your eye gate and into your mind, and when you start speaking those things, you're going to learn how to live in victory, church. Amen? Amen? I want you to see how many times the Lord uses the spirit of something. Okay? For instance, maybe, maybe once I get into it, you'll understand a little better. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. He says this. He, he, he says this. He said, and behold, there was a woman which had a what? Look what he calls this infirmity. A spirit. Ah, my God. I'm going to stay here for a minute or two. 
a spirit. 18 years, she, you know, was bent over, okay, and could no wise lift herself up. Look what the Lord called it. In other words, he, he wanted us to understand that sickness has a spirit behind it. Oh, my God. You getting this? I'm a, I'm a, I am don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, it has a sick, there's a spirit behind it. It's not just, well, you know, we live in a world and, you know, disease is disease. And, you know. No, it's a spirit. Infirmity is a spirit. And there's a spirit behind it. And it certainly isn't the Holy Spirit, so it's got to be a demonic spirit. So it's not where, we're, again, let me make this clear. It's not if you're sick, you have a devil. God forbid. Absolutely not. Okay? Then we all have one then. You know what I'm saying? That's not what we're talking about. What we have to understand, that the reference behind that sickness is a spirit from the devil. It's a spirit thing. Spirit of infirmity. That disease has a spirit, has a stronghold. So if you're going to fight that disease, you have to fight it with the Holy Spirit. You can't fight it any other way. You got to fight it with your thinking being in the right direction. You've got to talk to that thing, man. You've got to tell that thing. You've got no right in my life. And remember something. He didn't say, behold, there was a woman who had slip disc. I don't know what else that might keep you bent over. I don't know anything about this. I'm no chiropractor, okay? But no, he didn't say that. See, he didn't name it. He told you what it is. He told you where it's from. He called it a spirit of infirmity. He said, that woman's got a spirit behind that bowing down, that bent over, that slipped disc, that, that nerve ending, whatever it might be. I don't know. Whatever it is that, you know, maybe some of us are even fighting with, okay? Whatever it is, that woman's got that spirit. So listen to me, spirit of infirmity. You need to get out of my body. You need to leave me in the name of Jesus. I'm not giving you no name. Spirit of fear. We all know this one. 1 Timothy 1 7. 2 Timothy 1 7. Spirit of fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Okay? So 2 Timothy, it says this. It says, For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. See, but my point is, see, maybe not until today, you're understanding what God is calling that fear that comes over you in the middle of the night. A spirit. He didn't call it anxiety. You know, he didn't call it worry. He called it a spirit of fear. So now you know how to fight it. You learning something? All right. Hallelujah. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of man bring it a snare, a snare. And guess what a snare is? Stronghold, a stronghold. I don't know. Okay, let me go on. Number three. How about fear of the occult? Now, what does that fit? I'll show you. Fear of the occult. I want to put up Acts 16, 16 in the Amplified. Acts 16, 16. Beautiful. Perfect. As we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who was possessed by a spirit of divination claiming to foretell future events. You getting it? You getting it? Okay. And to discover hidden knowledge, and she brought her owners much gain by her fortune telling. Ooh. Got quiet. Got quiet, church. This woman got herself involved in what looked right, but wasn't right. It wasn't right. That just says it all. There's not really much to say behind that, you know? You don't have to get involved in this stuff, okay? Somebody from this this kind of lifestyle tells you something, you say, well, bind that up in Jesus' name. God said different. You know? You ain't telling me what my future is. I got Genesis to Revelation to tell me what my future is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right? Here's one that, that you know. Spirit of immorality. The, the, the abuse that, that's taking place today. The, the immoral lifestyle that's in, in, in the world today. You read that in Hosea 4.12. Number five, the spirit of bondage, Romans 8.15. Put that up, please. Romans 8.15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption. Now, look at here. 
You got to understand something. You see what I'm talking about here? Spirit of bondage, small s. Spirit of adoption, big s. Holy Ghost, devil. There it is. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. No, but notice what he calls the stronghold bondage. He calls it a spirit. A spirit is behind it, is what he's saying. All right. What, what, let, me do, let, me, let me see what, what else we got here down here for you. Okay? Anything other than God that is enslaving you, okay, is a spirit of bondage. It could be alcohol, tobacco. It could be television, you know. It could be shopping. Glory. Shoo, Jesus. Rapture. Now. All right, let me move on. But anything, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? I'm just trying to loosen you up a little bit here. So you pay attention. Now here's a good one, and we all know this one. Because this will put you, this is such a stronghold. This will put you in such bondage. It's the spirit of pride. Proverbs 16, 18. There's so many others in the Bible, by the way. I'm just giving you a few. The spirit of pride. Proverbs 16, 18 said, Pride go before the fall or destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Before a fall. Okay? I always said three of the hardest words for humans to say is, I was wrong. I was wrong. Men, learn something today. She's right. We're wrong. No. <laughs> Come on, ladies. Y'all to help me. Spirit of Antichrist. The spirit of the Antichrist. 1 John 4, 3. And I know what you're thinking. You know, what has that got to do with anything? Every spirit that confesses it not, that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is is that spirit of antichrist. Notice what he calls it. He calls it a spirit, okay? Whereof we have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world. Now, that's written a couple thousand years ago, okay? And here's what he's saying here. Why is that spirit in the world? Because he's saying it's a spirit of Antichrist, not the Antichrist. All right? So I wanted to just to teach you that there, okay? The Antichrist is, 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 you know, wasn't on the scene back then. Could be here today. Maybe not as evident yet. Could be. I'm not saying it is. Just could be, okay? But that's what he's saying. In other words, it was a spirit that was simply anti-Christ, against Christ. And we've got that today, too. Let's face it, church, all right? And, and so... But we have to know, the, you know, the real meaning of Antichrist is in the Greek. And what it means, okay, is really what it means is against the anointing or against the anointed one. That's really what it means. Number eight, spirit, I'm going to bring it home, spirit of heaviness or depression. Heaviness or a spirit of heaviness or depression. Isaiah 61, 3. Isaiah 61 verse 3 says this. I know it's up there, but I got to read it from my Bible here because I want to break it down a little bit because this is going to set some of you free. Hallelujah. 61 3 says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise. Now, now, there's so much in this scripture. You, what he's saying just now, I want to stop there for a minute. Praise. When you put on that garment of praise, okay, you can be delivered from depression. Ooh. For the spirit, here it is, look, of heaviness. What do you call it again? A spirit of heaviness. Look it up. It comes down to depression. That they might be called trees of righteousness and planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. In other words, when you get delivered from that spirit, God will be glorified. 
you can't glorify God being, you know, uh, you know, oppressed all the time. God doesn't want you to live that way. God wants you to live victorious. He wants you, he wants you to be the winner that you're called to be. But notice one of the things he said is that garment of praise, garment of praise. That's important, church. You can praise that thing right out of you. Number nine, spirit of error. Spirit of error. What's that? 1 John 4, 6. 1 John 4, 6 says this. We are of God. He that knoweth God, hear it us. Hear us. He that is not of God, hear it not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. King James. King James. In other words, a stronghold can take place in your life or bondage of the stronghold, okay, if you're living under an error, a mistake that you can't get over. That's called the spirit of an error, all right? You can't get over what you did. I can't get over my past. I can't leave my past behind. My past just keeps coming up, you know? That mistake I made a year ago, a month ago, two years ago, whatever it is, all right? I, I, I just blew it, Pastor, okay? I, I can't get over that. That's a spirit of error. He wants to keep you. It becomes a stronghold. He wants to keep you there, the devil does, so you cannot be fruitful for the kingdom of God. He wants you to live under that mistake. But my Bible says that by the shed blood of the Christ, uh, you have been forgiven. Your sins are as far as the east is from the west. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you, the more I Drink from